God is good. All the time. And all the time God is good. Amen. And those who are at home, welcome to the house of the Lord. And we're going to re- read the scripture for today, taken from book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 5. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 5. It's an interesting verse. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. And so, find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Amen? I like the verse 4. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Amen? This is what we are longing for every day, right? We want to be found nice in the sight of people around us and in God. Amen? And awesome. His presence is the one that enables us to achieve that, that desire. And praise God for this morning that we are here together again to worship the Lord. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we thank you for your wonderful love. We thank you for the week that passed to God. And we can look back and see how wonderful, how amazing. We thank you for all the miracles that you have worked on, Lord. We thank you for all the healings. We thank you for your favors that really showered us, Lord. And we are here, standing here, and wherever we are, God, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your, thank you for your goodness and your awesome presence, of God. Lord, we commit this morning into your hands. We come and humble ourselves before you. Search our hearts, of God. If there may be any sin, anything that we have done against you, we ask of you to forgive us, of God. We thank you for this wonderful presence. And then, Lord, we do not want to miss it for anything, of God. We want to touch your presence and enjoy and remain in your glory, O Lord, for the days to come, O God. We thank you for this time. Bless each and every one of us, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Let's prepare our hearts to worship the Lord with this song. It's your blood that cleanses me. <clears throat> it's your blood that cleanses me it's your blood that gives me love it's your blood that took my place in redeeming sacrifice washes me Whiter than the snow, than the snow, my Jesus, God's precious sacrifice. It's the blood of the Lamb. It's the blood of the Lamb. It's the blood of the Lamb that can cleanse my deepest things, washes me. than the snow than the snow my Jesus God's precious sacrifice it's your blood it's your 
It's your blood that cleanses me. It's your blood that gives me love. It's your blood that took my place in redeeming sacrifice. Washes me. than the snow than the snow my Jesus God's precious sacrifice my Jesus God's precious sacrifice My Jesus, God's precious sacrifice. My Jesus, God's precious sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for making us worthy, O God, to worship you, O God. You've got to worship the Lord. You've got to praise. Feel free to clap your hands. Amen. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our King, mighty is our Lord, ruler of everything. Glory to our God, glory to our King, glory to our Lord, ruler of everything. His name is higher, higher than any other name. His power is greater, for He has created everything. Mighty is our God, mighty is our King, mighty is our Lord, ruler of everything. Glory to our Lord, glory to our King. Glory to our Lord, ruler of everything. His name is higher, higher than any other name. His power is greater, He has created everything. The name of the Lord is a strong and mighty tower. The name of the Lord refuge for my soul. The name of the Lord is a pillar I can lean on. The righteous run into the name of the Lord. The righteous run into the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord strong and mighty tower. Hallelujah! The name of the Lord, the refuge for my soul. The name of the Lord is a pillar I can lean on. The righteous run into the name of the Lord. The righteous run into the name of the Lord. My life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord. In you, is in you. My life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord. In you, is in you. I praise you. All of my love, I praise you with all of my 
my strength with all of my life with all of my strength and all of my hope is in you my life is in you lord my strength is in you lord my hope is in you lord in you is in you my life is in you lord my strength is in you lord my hope is in you lord in you is in you my life is in you lord my strength is in you lord my hope is in you lord in you is in you in you is in you in you I'll praise you with all of my life and praise you with all of my strength with all of my life with all of my strength and all of my hope My life is in you Lord my strength is in you Lord my hope is in you Lord in you is in you my life is in you Lord my strength is in you Lord my hope is in you Lord in you upon your presence, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for strengthening every, every one of us, O oh God. And this is a prayer for you, God, Jesus. Prayer to you. That we say that we are waiting. Yes, Lord. We take time to wait upon your presence. Because that's where our strength is, O oh God. Help us, O oh Lord, to calm down ourselves and to wait upon you and listen to you.
Longing for your presence.
Yes, Lord. They can't breathe in me, and I will run on eagles wings. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We long for your presence, in God. Your presence is everything. For we know God, we can touch and get your favors of God filled in our lives as we seek your presence with all our hearts. Nothing of God, Father, can replace the blessings, the happiness, the joy that we can experience in your presence. And we do not want to be cheated again of God to exchange this presence for anything else. And we want to come back to you, O oh God, Father, worship you with all our hearts and longing for your favor every day, O oh God. For you, we know, God, that you are there longing to shower us with your favors, O oh God, beyond imaginations, O oh God. And we want to be in that presence, O oh God. We submit ourselves, we humble ourselves, we fall down on our knees before you and we seek your presence. Uses each and every one of us as, as a tool of God for your glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. God is good. More people, more people are coming back to church. <laughs> okay. For a moment, I thought at 10 o'clock, I, 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 I was alone here. <laughs> okay. And uh, but, uh, let's put our hand together and welcome Dr. James Koh. He's back here after, I think, almost 20 years. <laughs> When I was first here, you know, he, he came into Sramban, Sramban Town and we, for a short time, was here. And uh, welcome back. And also welcome back to Dr. Roshan. And I think he's going back to Jakarta. All right. It's been a great pleasure to have you, brother. And thanks for spending time to come over to see me. <laughs> Had a good time. So this is how it is uh, with the church, with the people of God. We are able to move around. So let's make full use of this to encourage one another. Praise God. And I come to the... No, just before I go to the announcement, I have a short testimony to share about concerning the favor of God. You know that it's amazing. It's just that I, it's, it's so sad. It is so sad. If we are not being filled with miracles every day and the favor of God every day, we are losing... A lot of things. Okay? And I've been saved by God graciously many times. And uh, you know that, uh, I don't know, sometimes, you know, have you tossed a coin to decide <laughs> any decision to do? <laughs> In the Bible they say, right, you can toss a coin to make a decision. And I prayerfully did that many times in my life. Uh, Anand is, uh, you know, he's playing golf. And last weekend we were in Johor. For don't know what reason, actually we didn't plan to go. It was a very big, huge commitment. And uh, at the last minute, the Lord just provided all the way out for us to go. I thought he's going to probably win the tournament or what. <laughs> but he just got number 13. <laughs> okay. He's, he's uh, recovering from a very bad fallback in his uh, performance and he's coming back. And actually, we're supposed to play in the coming tournament, the same place in Johor, uh, this week, coming weekend. And for, for reason that we couldn't, couldn't just, I couldn't get a leaf. Last week, I had, I could take a leaf and go. And I said, uh, I thought there's something is favorable happening. I thought something good is coming. Then he, he didn't do so well. But per personally speaking, I was with him. His game has improved. And I can see the hand of the Lord helping him build back himself. The testimony I want to share is that just keep trusting the Lord. 
Amen? And find enjoyment even in failure. <laughs> we had a great time uh, in Johor meeting up one of my auntie, my, my cousin, uh, my auntie. And they opened up the house for, uh, for three nights we stayed there. And uh, it was a wonderful fellowship. We encouraged them, I believe, and also we got encouraged. And it's always a goal that wherever we are going, we are bringing the, I don't know the word the pastor will use, the presence of God. There's another word, starts with C. Anybody knows? Something like kabod or kabod, is it, pastor? The presence of God? The kabod, is it? Ah, something like that. Sounded like that. I never go and study Greek or anything. But I feel I, I'm very, very encouraged with the presence of God. Then you feel true joy. Even in, you need not to be victorious in every circumstances, but you can find the joy. Amen? I want to encourage you. So he's going this weekend, and guess what? I got the best news today. He's supposed to play in a different course. And altogether, it's a new place, and we don't have a practice round. I cannot make it because I'm working on Friday. And the whole week we've been discussing how to send this, send him alone to go and practice. And this morning came out. They have changed the plan. He's going to play in the same course that he played last three days, <laughs> last, last week. So I don't have to go for practice run. It's all familiar and I just go on Friday and I'll be back on Monday. Isn't God good? Just a s- slip of some event that's taking place for whatever reason, it's run and comes to the good. The boundary has fallen on all, all your line. And this is what happens every day. And I want to encourage every one of us, trust in the Lord. Keep trusting in the Lord. No matter what situation we are in, the breakthrough is just around the corner. And just press on, holding on to Jesus. Just a little sharing to encourage all of us. Because there's much, not much announcement, only one announcement. Our Friday prayer meeting as usual. Uh, Friday at 9pm over the WhatsApp. So do tune in to this prayer meeting. It's encouraging to see getting more, but uh, we can have more of you joining online to pray together. Remember, it's still online. Huh? We have not come to church to pray. So there's, you can be jogging, you can be cycling, Maybe not driving. La. Driving maybe is still okay. You just listen. Put it on. Even I tried it in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, I was showering and then I just leave it on. Because we are late. Sometimes we are rushing and coming back from work. It's all convenient to worship the Lord, come together, the body of Christ and pray. I don't find any reason that we cannot. Only if we didn't have any plan or choice. It's all our choice. We can choose to do something else. So you did it. <laughs> you did it not to join the prayer meeting. It's not that you just happened that you couldn't join. So it's a bit hard, but I want to encourage you to pray because this church is, is, is Christ. We do things with Jesus with prayer. It's nothing about our money or our energy or our talent. It's all about praying. Amen? So I believe all of us are encouraged to join the prayer meeting. On Fridays, 9 p.m. That's about it for the announcement. Uh, praise God. Pastor Ambrose is back, back home to give our message again this morning. A wonderful message about the Holy Spirit. Before we go to that, yeah, just a reminder that uh, we're going to pass around the offering bag. Before that, let's pray for the tithe and the offering. Father God, we thank you for the tithe and the offering that's, that we have prepared this morning. It's always a great pleasure, Lord, to bring our tithe and offering with a joyful heart to give unto you. And this morning, we remember those who are having difficult times with this COVID situation and uh, the prices of things going up, people finding it difficult to do business and getting a job. We pray for breakthrough for all our believers of God, especially also the people around us of God. We pray for diligence in the leadership in our country so that we can be blessed of God. We pray for this tithe and offering. Bless each and every cheerful giver continue to trust you a lot for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The offering back passing going around, I'd like to pass this time to Reverend Dr. Ambrose John.
Shalom, good morning. Very good morning to all of you and welcome to Evangel this morning. And uh, welcome uh, Dr. James. Good to see you. Uh, one day I, I was praying and suddenly uh, his name came up. And um, so I was looking through my phone whether I still have his contact. But I found his contact in the messenger in the Facebook. So I messaged him. Uh, I told him I'm praying for you, you know, especially praying for you. And he said, well, thank you so much for praying for me. Uh, he really needed that. So anyway, so uh, I was in touch with his blogs. He, had, he writes, he used to write blogs, but no longer now. Uh, his blogs are very interesting as a doctor, as a father, as a husband. You know, his stories are in, interesting to read. Uh, and he's also an interesting man because uh, when uh, we first got to know each other, he was in Kuala Church and he was a worship leader, one of the worship leaders, an amazing worship leader, just with the guitar. Praise God. He sounds like one of the heel songs. <laughs> I mean, in Kuala of course, in you know, Kuala Church, small church, we all enjoyed his worship. Uh, at the same time, uh, I bumped into him in uh, GH, and uh, it is through this doctor that I really got to know uh, my condition as a diabetic patient. And he explained to me in detail, until today I never forget uh, how he, he, he detailed everything about the whole process of the uh, diabetic, uh, you know, uh, condition and, and what happens when you take the medicine, what happens when you don't take the medicine, what happens when you exercise. Uh, so he gave me a, a clear description of how the cells work in the body in response to sugars. So, doctor, you did a good job. Until today, I remember. <laughs> but you can remember all the facts, but still you, you find that you need to have your disciplines to follow, follow this instruction. That, that is the... the uh, you know, biggest problem with patients uh, <laughs> that uh, doctors will work very hard on you, uh, but it all ends up with us, with our disciplines. Anyway, thank you, doctor. And uh, we praise God for doctors. Amen. Uh, thank you so much this morning, uh, Brother, uh, Brother Devon, for the worship. I really, really, really love that song, the last song that you sang, uh, Breathe on Me. It is really wonderful. It's very appropriate for this morning's message. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your amazing love, an amazing salvation, and the amazing uh, process of transformation that is taking place in our lives. And we thank you, Father, in this ongoing process, we have blessed Holy Spirit with us to be able to enable us, strengthen us, and also to open up our spirit man, to be able to capture uh, what uh, the voice of the Lord is and the word of the Lord is, so that we can move on and change, as well as to develop, to be able to accommodate ourselves in the kingdom lifestyle. We thank you this morning for your word, and help us, Lord, to focus upon the word this morning so that we be able to capture uh, what you have intended for us uh, in this topic of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, for ministering to us also uh, by the power of the uh, healing and deliverance upon us, even as we hear the word. And may a mighty, mighty work of the Holy Spirit take place so that we will be wholesome and filled with the abundance. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Uh, this morning, we're going to continue with our topic on the Holy Spirit as the Comforter and the Teacher in my part two. Uh, I hope it's enough because the, the material is a lot of material, so I'm trying to condense everything together. But before I start off with it, can we just move on to the slides? Okay. Uh, this is what... Uh, I started off with knowing our God, Holy Spirit. Remember I told you that the Bible is divided into three dispensations. The first dispensation is Yahweh or God the Father from Genesis right up to Malachi. 
in which that God reigns and God appears in the Garden of Eden. And then God appears also to uh, several people in the Bible, namely uh, Moses. Remember Moses? When Mo uh, Moses asked God, God, can you show me yourself? And God showed himself, but only the back portion of himself. Did you remember this? Now, so this is the direct intervention of God, Yahweh, in the Old Testament. And therefore, whenever they talk about they hearing God or talking to God, they're referring to speaking to Yahweh or Yahweh speaking through the prophets to them. Now, after that, uh, as the prophets have said, uh, uh, his son Jesus will come over. Uh, he will come in, which is prophesied, he will come in and take over in a certain short dispensation during the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the dispensation of Jesus, which means Jesus came to do a deep work among humankind. Now, after that, remember John 14, Jesus said, I will go away physically, but I'm still there with you, but there will be another person physically coming down upon you. From the book of Acts chapter 2, you find this is whom he introduced as the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. So God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So from the time in the book of Acts until uh, the book of Revelations, where the Holy Spirit keeps uh, speaking to the seven churches, until now, the Holy Spirit is still uh, present, available in ministry, in manifestation, so, that, so much so that in our working together in the church, all in our ministries, we are dependable upon the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is now using you and me. At the same time, He is coming upon us. So He may come in the form of what uh, David was trying to say, kabot, which is the heavy presence of God, or the anointing, which is also the presence of God, or the glory, which is also the presence of God, or the grace, which is also the presence of God, which means he creates the atmosphere, he brings the atmosphere. So his work, the work of the Holy Spirit, is to make things easy for us. That's why he's called the comforter. Come on, say comforter. So he's supposed to make things easy in our life. He's the paraclete who comes by our side, stands by our side, as Pastor, uh, Pastor Raymond has mentioned, that his role as a, uh, uh, as a helper, as a, you know, in a military role, to stand by your side in support of the kind of life that you're living in because you, you really need to understand we don't have to, uh, you know, to be uh, sinking in with the stress of this world. He wants you to float on the stress of this world by the help of the Holy Spirit. I repeat, he wants you to float on the stress, not sink in the stress of the world, so that he can help you to keep you afloat in this world, not touched by the stress of this world with the power of peace, joy, and love. Come on, say amen. Yeah. So remember, yeah? So being a Christian or having an encounter with Christ and having an encounter with the Holy Spirit is a wonderful encounter for us to be victorious, and Paul mentions it in Romans. He said, you are more than conquerors. Nobody say amen. You are more than, you are more than, yeah. So therefore, I am not worried about the political situation. I am not worried about the economic situation. I am not worried about enemies around me. I'm not worried about the challenges, but what I'm worried about is, am I soaked by the Holy Spirit on a daily basis? Not one time filled with the Holy Spirit. Soaked, saturated by the Holy Spirit in my body, soul, and spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Now many of you are sleeping. You are supposed to meditate on the word day and night, but you're not meditating on the word. But, but you can hear yourself meditating upon your problems. Hello. So this morning, we need to get back into our encounter with the Holy Spirit because we are going to encounter and we have to keep encountering the Holy Spirit in different dimensions. 
Now, in the Old Testament, if you read the Old Testament, if you are ever reading the Bible, remember, read the Bible in your agenda of reading the Bible is to encounter Yahweh in the Old Testament, encounter Jesus in the New Testament Gospel, encounter the Holy Spirit. All three persons of the Godhead must, uh, must have a touch in your life. You follow me? Amen? Now, being re religious is just about changing your moral standard. I, I repeat, yeah? Being religious is about changing your moral standard. Christianity is nothing to do with moral standard. You know why? Because your moral standard is taken care of by the righteousness of Jesus, which you are clothed on. You follow me? So it's not all about you're bad or you're good or you need to change or you need, don't need to change. This is not the talk we are supposed to have with one another. But what we have supposed to talk about one another is the power of God working in each other so that in that encounter, we will change. For example, I give you an example. Remember Paul? Yeah? Before he was Paul, he was Saul. Now Saul, nobody could preach to him. People would have tried to preach to him. But he was head on. He was head on to persecute the church destroy the church, wipe out the Christianity, you know? And so he thought that's a religion. So we don't need that religion. We already have a religion. So therefore he was head on and he finally got head on with Jesus Christ. So in that one encounter with Jesus, in that one encounter with Jesus, from a bad man, he became a good man. Am I right? Am I right? From the one encounter, he be from a bad man, wicked man, he became a good man. He was not filled with the Holy Spirit yet. Remember this. He was not filled with the Holy Spirit yet. He just met Jesus and then he was blinded. Okay? So there are three parts of him that was touched on the day. His mind, his body was touched. His uh, mind, his, his soul was touched. And his spirit man was touched. And therefore he turned around and said, Oh my, who am I talking to? And Jesus, Jesus said, you, I am the Lord that you are persecuting. And so he immediately changed his whole purpose, vision of life. If you ever want to change uh, your life or transform or a moral change in your life, you need one touch from Jesus, one voice from Jesus, one encounter from Jesus. That's enough. Don't talk about the Bible. Don't talk about the Holy Spirit yet. But after thereafter, you find that Paul, Saul, began to prepare himself for ministry, and therefore that's a needful time for him to wait upon the Holy Spirit. He received the Holy Spirit after receiving the Holy Spirit. Then he went on to another waiting period where the Holy Spirit was preparing him for ministry. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the second breath of life in you. You receive the breath of life from your mother's womb. But now, when you, when you meet, when you meet Jesus, when you meet Jesus, He will introduce to you another breath of life, besides the breath of life from your mother's womb. Your mother's womb, the breath of life from your mother's womb provides the DNA, provides the, the strength to live. But this breath from God, provides a spiritual DNA inside of you that you no longer be the same. You are born again. You are no longer the same. All things, all things pass away. All things become new. You follow me? Amen. That's why your habits will change. You will throw away the bottle. You will throw away the cigarette. You will throw away phonography. You will throw away all the habitual things that holds on to you because no longer slave to all those things anymore. Now you are a person straight on, head on to the purpose that God has for your life. So you are now living in the spiritual DNA that you are supposed to live in. Amen. Now, doctors, I, I respect the doctors. I, I, I have to go to the doctor. Tomorrow is my appointment with the doctor. 
I respect them. I respect their pres- uh, prescription. You know, I don't deny that I need the medicines. But their realm of ministry is only on the body. Not the soul. Not the spirit. Their ministry is in the body. They know everything about them. They study seven years from every dot of the body, from the blood right up to the nerves, to the muscles, to the tissues. They know everything about you. But they don't know your spirit man. They don't know your mind. Clear? Clear? Yeah, we need, we need them. But you also need spiritual doctors. Namely, Holy Spirit is the doctor of spiritual, spiritual, you know, your spirituality. Or you, you who is a spirit being, you need him as a doctor in your life. So if I were to get myself healthy in my body, soul and spirit, I need to admin, uh, be administered by the one who gives me not only the breath of uh, physical life, but the one who gives me a spiritual breath, I need to go to him also, so that I shall be strengthened. Now, go back down to the Holy... Who is the Holy Spirit? Who is God? Okay. Remember this, keep it in mind. Huh? You have three parts of you, body, soul, and spirit. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, He works upon your body. He also works upon your soul. He also works upon your spirit man simultaneously. So that's why when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit upon a person varies from people to people. It all depends on how much a certain person, how much a certain person surrenders his body surrenders his soul, which is his mind, and surrenders his spirit man. Have you ever seen people filled with the Holy Spirit and they go? Have you seen that? You know what's that all about? Oh, my many years of ministry, praying for baptism of the Holy Spirit, I studied every one of them, taken notes of them, of all those who go through these manifestations. And I found out one thing. If a person is struggling to surrender himself to God, he goes this. If a person is struggling in his mind to surrender his mind, he goes... He cannot articulate what the Holy Spirit wants to say. Now, if a person is not surrendered his spirit man, his spirit man struggles with the Holy Spirit. So therefore, there is no fullness of the breath coming in, but just a visitation of the breath of God coming in your life. And then, that's only for the moment. After that, you don't feel it anymore. You follow me? So there are many, hundreds of people, or thousands of people, filled with the Holy Spirit, but they do not know to uh, what dimension of the baptism of the Holy Spirit they received. And they say... According to denominations, the sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. Now, there's a big question. How many people speak in tongues? And how many people who speak in tongues still tell lies? How many people speak in tongues still doing some something (laughs) with their body, soul, and spirit? How many people speaking in tongues have really changed or still in the process of changing? And how did Paul change suddenly, instantly? So the question is this. I discovered from all the research, it all depends on the person. I have also seen those who are filled with the Holy Spirit. They receive the Holy Spirit. At the moment of time, the struggle of the body. At the moment of time, a struggle of the babbling in their mouth. At the moment of time, a struggling in their spirit man to come under the power of the Holy Spirit. But those who have been overcome by the Holy Spirit, 
they come under the power of the Holy Spirit, total control of the Holy Spirit. In, in the next couple of days, I see them come back and tell me, Pastor, I'm so thankful. I can feel the joy. I can feel the peace. I can feel the love of God. I can feel all the ingredients of heaven inside of me. And I suddenly feel myself totally different. Totally different. And until, talking about myself, I used to have very bad sinus problems. But when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, instantly that night itself, that sinus left me. And then I had another problem. And the other problem is I had, I had traumatic fears ever since I was a child. I had bad dreams all the time. Visitations of the spirits in the night most of the time. When the Holy Spirit took over my life, that instant, the spirits never touched me anymore. Which means my spirit man was set free. My soul, my mind was set free. My body was set free from physical ailments. In other words, when the Holy Spirit, which is the breath of God, comes in your life, He takes your whole life and makes it wholesome again, complete, so that you go back to your original restored person as God wants you to be. You follow me? Amen? So tonight, this, this morning, I just want to share with you uh, uh, this, this breath of God, uh, the meaning of this breath of God, and how the breath of God can come inside your life and totally change the way you think the way you understand, the way you look at life, the way you manage life itself. Amen. So that you, no matter what field you are in, somehow you are the best of the best. Hallelujah. There are other words that I need to share with you. Like for example, IQ. How many of you know there's a thing called IQ? How many of you know there's a thing called EQ? You know, huh? So, I, what, how does IQ and EQ come in play with the Holy Spirit? Well, IQ and EQ can be inherited from your parents, from your biological parents, which means you, the capacity to think the way you think, the way, the, how agile you are with your mind, which is your physical mind. But this has got, this has got a very little uh, 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 role in your life. Of course, some of them who who, who uh, fine-tune this IQ and EQ in their life, become excellent. But what about wisdom of God? What about revelation of God? How can they be connected to the IQ and EQ in your life and enhance that IQ and EQ in your life so that you become much more than you are? Remember? Do you remember Solomon? Do you remember Solomon? Now Solomon became wiser when the Lord gave him the spirit of wisdom upon him. But this man, as a young man, he did not have that wisdom. So it was added upon in his life. So the same thing can happen to you when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will make it available to you so that your thought patterns and your mindset can be enhanced and developed in such a way that you think much more higher than the worldly people. True? You think about it and see? True? Now, now, first of all, let's look at the word breath of God. What is the breath of God? The breath of God in Hebrew is rawash. In Greek is pneuma. Uh, it is a term in reference to God as a person. Okay? God as a person. So it is His breath. The breath of God belongs to God. He is a person. But how can He give His breath to us? So He doesn't give His total breath to us, but He gives a portion of the breath to us. And uh, the Bible tells us the Holy Spirit... The Hebrew language for the phrase Ruach HaKadosh in Hebrew, uh, 
refers to the Spirit of God, which is a portion of God transferred to us, or the portion of God, a part of God, made available to us in person, who is the Holy Spirit. Ruach HaKadosh is the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit. You follow me? So in other words, there is a transference of the presence of Jesus in your life, transference of the uh, Holy Spirit in your life, transference of Yahweh in your life. In other words, the total person uh, of God comes into us in, 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 in forms, in levels, in dimensions, as we go in relationship with Him. You follow me? Amen? Now, John 20, open your Bible with me, with me. Open your Bible. I won't show it here. You open your Bibles with you. You have John 20, 22 and 23. John 20, 22, 23. You open your Bibles. And I want you to see this verse here. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. So what did Jesus do? He talked to the disciples, and after having a talk with the disciples, he breathed on them. You remember this verse? Now go back and think about it. What did, why did Jesus do that? He breathed on them. So when he breathed on them, the Holy Spirit, is it the same as the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples in Acts chapter 2? You, you think about it. Have a deep think, yeah? Jesus breathed his breath on the disciples. How? This is what he did. Okay? I'll tell you a funny story, yeah? As I was growing up in the ministry, one day the Holy Spirit, in, in the ministry, in, in the, at the pulpit, the Holy Spirit told me this. Take the microphone. As the people come for all the call, you just blow, breathe, breathe out your breath. <sighs> breathe out your breath. I was thinking I'm going cuckoo. I was, th I, was, I was thinking it's so funny. I've not done it before, but I've seen it in television. People do that and people just fall down. And I was afraid to do that because they think I was copying them. And then I was thinking that you know, it's, it's, just, it's just silly to do this. But Holy Spirit keep telling me this, just do that. Just do that. So I laid hands to pray. I, I was hesitant. I went to lay hands and pray. Nothing happened. And then after that, after going praying for a couple of people, laying hands, nothing happened. It, finally, the prompting was so strong. I took the microphone. I walked past by the people. And I blew. <laughs> receive. Receive the Holy Spirit. <laughs> receive the power of God. <laughs> receive the healing. Top, 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 top. All of them began to fall down. And then some screaming away. And then some said, oh, I'm, my pain's gone. I was shocked. That's the first time in my life, my breath, no matter how foul my breath was, but my breath, Rod did something there, you know. Then it occurred to me, the scripture verse, my Lord has breathed into my breath, into this temple, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in me was working in my life, and is always constantly working in my mind. He's also working in the words that I say. So I said to myself, oh my God, the breath of God is so powerful. And that from that day onwards, Holy Spirit said to me, whatever you open your mouth and say to somebody, it will happen. You try. So I tried it. Okay, sister, one, I think, couple come here. You are going to have a baby in six months' time. I don't know what I was doing. My mind was fighting with me. My spirit man was fighting with me. And the words just blabbered out from me. And the words were not mine. And the words went forth. After six months, this couple calls me up and says, uh, we have a baby. Please give me your bank account. 
He will send you some money. What? <laughs> God gives some more. God rewards some more. <laughs> and that's the breath of God, not my breath. Hallelujah. Amen. Which is true. That's what Proverbs says. Life and death comes from the words that you say. And Jesus said, I will hold you accountable for every word you are going to say until judgment come. I will wait and wait and, and, and weigh your words that you spoke. From that day onwards, things were to my mind. It was so important that the breath of God, I should not waste it. Wherever there is an opportunity for me to counsel somebody or say some good thing to somebody or to bless somebody or to even say a word of prayer, I will not hesitate, take the phone call or go somewhere, touch that person and speak to the person's life because it's not my breath. It's the breath of God. Amen? Now, if you live like this, if you live like this, what's going to happen is the Spirit of God who made me and the breath of God that had given me life, I treasure it and it begins, uh, it begins to bring fruit and some kind of tangible experience in people's life and my life. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Job 33 verse 4. This is what Job says. The Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is the Spirit of God who has made me and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. Now, uh, going back to John 20 in verse 23, watch this. Another thing here, Jesus said, after he breathed this breath on the disciples, he said, whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. What does it mean? It means that the breath of Jesus transferred to the disciples was a breath of authority as how Jesus forgave the sins of the people as how Jesus could judge the sins of the people the same way that same authority is given to you and I. Whosoever sins you cancel is canceled. Whosoever sins you don't cancel is not canceled. Do you try and see? You go back and try and see. Lah. You go back and try and see. Whosoever sins you cancel is canceled. Whosoever sins is not canceled, it is not canceled. Which means that if I want to make sure that uh, I want to label the fellow as, this is the fellow, he is a notorious, he is useless, he is an idiot. So that's how it's going to be. But if you cancel that and say otherwise upon the person's life, no matter how negative that person can be, but you throw the positive upon the person, you are exercising the breath of God to remake, restructure. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't waste your time huh? complaining about somebody, murmuring about somebody, you know, ju making judgment about somebody. Who the hell are you? Huh? Who are you? You are the child of God. So therefore, you're not from any hell. You're from heaven. You are a child of God. You represent God and the heavenly breath of God. So therefore, you have all the right now to cancel, to release, to set free somebody, not bind the person according to the person's weaknesses. Are you following me? Amen? Yeah. Now, this is also my experience over the many, many years of ministry. It's not difficult to change a person. Take over the person. In church, which is very important in church, when you meet each other, one of the one of the key principles of fellowship is you encourage, you counsel, you help, you give wisdom, you lift up the person, not press down the person. Are you following me? Yeah, that's ministry. Okay. Going back to the breath of God, turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Genesis 1 verse 27 Genesis 1 verse 27.
Therefore, God made man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, and male and female, he created them. The word image, if you magnify the word image, it talks about the breath of God, part of the breath of God, or the mirror image of the breath of God is now put into man and woman. So the breath of the image of God is passed on upon man when God took man out from the, you know, when God took the clay out from the, uh, from the earth, formed man, and he breathed upon the clay. Watch this in the process, huh? He took an inanimate thing, the sand or the earth or the clay, and then something that has got no life, he breathed on it. He breathed on that thing, and that thing became alive because of the breath of life, and that uh, together with the breath of life, or along with the breath of life, suddenly something happened. A form of God began to develop in that clay. You follow me? You follow me? So when you and I are living, walking today, we are living and walking today because of the breath in creation. So, well, uh, life is in the blood, life is in the bone marrow, life is in the muscles, life is in the heart. All that life is birthed from the breath that is working inside of us. So when someone dies, that someone dies because the breath is taken away. It's not just because of a medical, what do you call that? Uh, 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 a terminology that the person is dead, that all the functions of the body just stops. But the, for the functions of the body to keep on going, you need the breath of life. So somehow God in his own time, wants to take away his breath, he can take away his breath at any time. Follow me? So it's not determined by a biological process to keep you alive, but it is a spiritual process to keep you alive. Are you following me? Are you following me? Listen very carefully. Huh? It's a spiritual process to keep you alive. It is not a biological process or scientific process to keep you alive. You follow me? So if God wants to take away your life, He can take, take away your life anytime. So somehow He works it in, in mysterious ways. Your heart fails or your organs fails or somehow, you know, definitely it is some failure in the, in the, in the medical, in the what do you call it, physical field, but somehow it's connected to the timing of God that, the, that God wants His breath back. You follow me? It's all intertwined, very complex. But the most important thing we need to understand that you have your body, soul, and spirit all intact in this clay, in this sand, in this dust. This dust has to go back to dust. But before it goes back to dust, while it's still living, this dust has got in his body, soul, and spirit the breath of life. So when God breathed upon the clay, he breathed his image and he breathed also his life, creative life, just like he put the life on the plants and the animals. Everything is created by God and all the breath of life is now constituted to become the life around us. Are you following me? Amen? So when you look at all the creation around us, it's God. When you look at yourself, it's God. Amen? It's not just a scientific function, but it is a spiritual function. Say spiritual function. Spiritual. You need to connect yourself to the spiritual function of life around you and life within you. So when, G, when God blew the breath upon this clay in Genesis 2, 17, uh, uh, Genesis 2 verse 7 and Genesis 2 verse 17. Watch very carefully. In Genesis 2 verse 7 it says, The Lord God formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Now this breath of life in Hebrew is Chaim. 
Tishayim. It's called functional breath. When this functional breath leaves you, you die. You die. Amen? Okay. How many of you know that you have to be born again to be a, having the image of God again? Yeah? If you're not born again, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 says, All of us are dead in trespasses. Dead. But we're still living, ma. How come we are dead? We are dead because that's one part of you died. God said to Adam and Eve, the day that you sin, the day that you disobey, you die. So after Adam and Eve sinned, did they die? After Adam and Eve sinned, did they die? Of course, it took them thousands of years. They lived for several hundreds of years, and then they died. But they still lived on, but they died. So that's the death that God is talking about. When you sin, your chime will be taken away. But before your chime is taken away, something else is taken away. So they lived for such a long time, but they lived in the chime, which means the functional breath. The body pumping, the heart pumping, the organs were going on, the bones were still fresh, the blood was still going on, they were still living. But living in what? Living in a disobedient, sinful lifestyle. So when the breath of God, when, when God breathed upon that clay, he, he breathed upon that a functional breath called Chaim, and also the second breath, which is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in that day you eat, you shall surely die. Okay? Now, that death, the death he's talking about is nefesh. Doxa. Glory. Shekinah. The day you sin, the Shekinah stops. The day you sin, the glory stops. The day you sin, you no longer have the image of God. A distorted form of God is in your life. Are you following me? That's why if you read Ephesians 2 verse 1, yeah, we were all dead in trespasses. Dead in trespasses meaning those who continue to live in sin or walking in sin will now uh, will participate in the death life, life in Chaim without the Nefesh. Are you following me? Are you confused? Hope you're not confused, huh? Listen very carefully, huh? The difference between you and the ones who never received Jesus, the one who never received Jesus don't have the Nefesh. They live in the Chaim. They live in the five senses. They live in the soul. But their spirit man is dead. The glory is not there anymore. You fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. What does it mean? You fall short of the nefesh or the actual image of God in your life. That's the reason why those who, who don't know God, don't know how to live by God, don't know how to live by the truth, they live Crooked ways. Are you following me? Can I hear the amen? Are you following me? So when the Lord breathed upon you, He breathed upon you, Shaim, on the clay, so that it wakes up, and then Nefesh to come inside of Him, so that He will live like God. So in your Christian life, the struggle is, are you living with the ne Chaim or are you living in the Nefesh? Are you living in the breath of life or are you just living in the life of creation, creational life? You follow me? We all can live, but some live in accordance to their desires and their belly and their strength and their stamina. But there are others who also live 
they live with the mighty presence of God, the glory of God, the Shekinah of God around them, so that, so that they are not controlled by the passions of life, they are not controlled by the desires of life, they are controlled by another form of control, which is a heavenly kingdom lifestyle, which is, I don't need to live by bread alone. Remember Jesus said, we don't have to live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. In other words, he's saying, we don't have to live on the physical alone. We don't have to live on the physical nutrition, which is for the chayim, but we live in the spiritual nutrition, which is the spirit of the breath of God. You follow me? I hope I don't confuse you, yeah? Amen? Get this clear. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he comes upon you to complete the whole creation, to bring you back uh, from, uh, you know, losing the, 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 the glory, for, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, to pull you back into the glory line, so that now you live a life not like the worldly people, that you admire them, but you live a life that they will admire you, you are the light. Say amen. Hallelujah. So in other words, the supremacy of, of your mind, the supremacy of your function, all comes to you by the supreme presence of God the Holy Spirit in your life so that you, your, your standard of living and your life is completely different from the world. Amen. Please don't be ashamed. Be, be, be ashamed of yourself. And, and then you shame yourself by admiring the people who have with their own wits and with their own cleverness or their shrewdness, they become smart or rich. Don't do that. You, you are despising God. But God, the Holy Spirit, who lives, who lives in you and pours upon you, just like God did to Solomon, He filled Solomon with the wisdom that many in the whole world came to see His wisdom. Am I right? The same way, the Spirit of God now wants to come upon you so that you can now shine forth the doxa, the shakina, the glory that is supposed to come back to you. You follow me? Amen? So the solution is what? What is the solution? The solution is, am I going to surrender my body? Am I going to surrender my body to God? Am I going to completely surrender my soul, my mind to God? Am I going to completely surrender my spirit to God? Then you find an encounter of the Holy Spirit. Many people cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Somehow part of their body is held back, part of their mind is held back, and part of the spirit man is held back with some nonsense. I have prayed for many young people, and those people, young people who are preoccupied in their mind with confusion and intrusion and complications, and, and, and their mind is, you know, filled with some corruption, it's so hard to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I remember when I was told to prepare for the Holy Spirit, I fasted for three days, and I was told that in order for the Holy Spirit to really come inside of you as a temple, he, he needs to see your body cleansed, your mind cleansed, your spirit cleansed, so that when you're totally cleansed, only then he can come. Why? He's holy. Come on, say holy. Yeah, come on. Come back to your senses. Holy Spirit is holy. So if you're not holy in your talk, in your mind, your thinking, in your walk, how can he just flow in your life? Amen? Simple. Very simple. So the more you keep your house dirty, everybody's going to come and complain about your house, the way you live in. So you have to come out of that stench of dirt of sin and the corruption of the world, both in your body, your mind, uh, your soul, and your spirit man. So both your body, your emotions, and your spirit man must be totally cleansed and prepared for the Holy Spirit to visit you and fall upon you. Hallelujah. In other words, Jesus is saying to you, come, become like the little child. Amen. Just don't come with your confusion. 
just throw away everything and come as a little child, he will just flow on your life. You have to surrender yourself just like the clay is surrendered in the hands of God. For the nefesh, for the chayim to flow through just mere clay. You and I are just mere clay and the nefesh and the chayim can just flow through you. Amen? Listen, it's nothing to do about you being good or you not being good. It's not about moral standard. It's about an encounter of recreation. That God wants to recreate you so that you will have the best of the best in life. Hallelujah. Okay. I have to stop now. You know why? I've jammed up your brains with so many things. <laughs> There's another part of it, part three. Maybe I'll try to do another day, okay? I've got a whole lot of, lot of slides, but just a little gist of it. Can just put a slide? So when you receive the Holy Spirit, you move on to a dimension. Watch this dimension, huh? Move further up. Now, this is, this is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. All this, huh? Is the dispensation of, which means the working of the Holy Spirit in the whole of Book of Acts, right? Now, next, when Jesus, when Jesus begins to start his ministry, he has to depend on the Holy Spirit. Watch this. This is the dynamics of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, who has the thoughts that are not your thoughts, who has a way which is not our way. His ways are higher, his thoughts are higher, and so in verse 9 says, for as the heavens and, and, and are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. In other words, our thinking pattern, our understanding um, is not as equal to Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit always connected himself with God, and the lifestyle and the mindset, mindset of God, the dynamics is so much more higher. So if you go back and read in the Old Testament, people like Solomon, people like David, and all these prophets who live in a dimension of mindset which was not ordinary mindset. Are you following me? Yeah. Next. So when, when Jesus started his ministry, the dynamics of the Holy Spirit rested on Jesus in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, it says what? And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God. Watch this, verse, tw verse 2 and verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. In other words, his seeing is not his seeing. His hearing is not his hearing. It is now the spiritual nefesh way of seeing and hearing, and the nefesh way of understanding and wisdom or thinking. Are you following me? So your EQ and your IQ, uh, EQ and your IQ is enhanced brought up so high that when Jesus began to speak he, speak, he spoke into the spirit man of each person. You follow me? Today, the same dynamics of the Holy Spirit wants to rest upon us, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, but as it's written, I has not seen, now underline these verses and go back home read, yeah? This is us today. As, the, as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Come on, say amen. In other words, I don't know, but now I know. Amen. I didn't know, but I know. How? Spirit of God. In verse 10, but God had revealed them to us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Listen, my friend, if you are doing your work in the marketplace, if you are going about in your ordinary life, listen, there is a thinking, there is a searching, 
that the Holy Spirit wants you to join together with Him to go deeper in thinking. I know when you open your books and to study, when you open your books to find out a solution, there are solutions that are written. But there are solutions that may not be written, but comes in as an inspiration in your life. Are you following me? Amen? As a dream in your life, as a vision in your life, Holy Spirit is able to open up your mind with treasures from heaven so that He can now drop in into you a, a powerful, valuable treasures of solution and ideas that no one can teach you. Amen. So in your walk with the Holy Spirit, come on, enjoy it. Enjoy it because He's constantly wanting to open up your eyes to show you the secrets that He has in store for you. You follow me? Amen. So it's an exciting time. Isn't it exciting? It is an exciting time. Tomorrow morning you get up in the morning, just spend 15 minutes. Holy Spirit, I'm here. Prepare me for the day. Amen. And if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, if you can speak in tongues, go ahead, speak in tongues as much as you can. That is the avenue that opens up your mind and He begins to drop the very secrets of God. Hidden things. He says hidden things. Hidden things open up for you. Isn't God good? So don't just live on the Chaim, but live in the Nefesh, the real life. Shall we stand together? Praise God. Let's give glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Let's just sing this song as a prayer in your life huh, this morning. Let this song be a prayer to remind you that we constantly need to have the breath of God working in our life. Amen. Wait a second. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Amen. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning as we surrender our body and our soul and our spirit meant to you that once again you will reenact once again you will take the act of taking the clay we are your clay and you will begin to breathe upon us as how Jesus breath breathe his breath upon the disciples so that we will have the authority once again that we will rise up into the glory lifestyle so that we will not just live ordinarily as ordinary people but live in an extraordinary lifestyle with an extraordinary mindset so that lord we will be living in excellence amen may the spirit of wisdom the spirit of power the spirit of grace and the spirit of love and the spirit of joy and this mighty spirit of wisdom and understanding and revelation flow into each one of us as we hunger lord and wait upon you that you will fill us until our bodies can feel until our emotions can feel it and until our spirit man can be ignited to know that we are become new lord restore your mighty holy spirit upon those who need it those who hunger fill them with your power so that they will not just live ordinarily and keep struggling with their weaknesses but they will overcome those weaknesses to be great overcomers before you lord bless each and every one for your healing and deliverance in their life bless each and every one to prosper them in their life so they shall excel and stand be- above every a, a situation and be an overcomer therefore lord let the breath of life bring healing upon flesh and bones this morning let the breath of life bring also healing upon the mind and the spirit man to bring the newness of the life upon them as you have given us lord according to your word lord bless your people in jesus holy name we pray amen amen, amen. let's say the lord's prayer together Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen father may your mighty people go forth to the homes and the working places and may your holy spirit uh, minister to them and the love of the father the grace of jesus christ and the presence of the holy spirit will minister and comfort them and lead them and make them fruitful in whatever they do in jesus name we pray and all say amen god bless you and we we'll see you again next sunday